So recently there's been a lot of interest in de-googling Android, but the problem is the process can be quite difficult at times, especially if you're not familiar with tinkering with Android. So in today's video I'm going to sort of explain how you can de-google Android as simply and in-depth as possible. Right now on the Linux Lounge. Now the first problem you might encounter when de-googling an Android device is that every device is different and there are numerous ways to go about de-googling Android. But the method that I recommend is flashing a custom ROM and just simply not installing any Google apps afterwards. Generally the process for that looks like this. You have to unlock your bootloader, install the custom recovery, and then flash the ROM that you want. So what I plan to do in this video is show you roughly how to do that and try to cover every step of the process as much as possible. Also, before I begin, I should just say that this video isn't for people who are familiar with flashing custom ROMs and whatnot. If you're one of those people, the TLDR for you is this. Install your custom recovery, flash Lineage OS for Micro G, and use your device. But with that said, this is a full guide on how to de-Google your device for people who maybe aren't so familiar with tinkering with Android. First, you'll want to do a backup of all of your data, as if you do this, you will lose everything on your phone. Once you've done that, there are three things that you need to download. The Android tools for your PC, a custom ROM for your phone, and a custom recovery for your phone. The only one of those three things I can tell you exactly where to go to get is the Android tools. If you're running Linux, most distributions tend to have those in the default repository. For example, on Arch, all I needed to do was run sudo pacman-s android tools. Other distributions will of course have different commands you need to run. If you're running Windows or Mac OS, there are several places you can get the Android tools from, and I'll have one of those places linked in the description below. Next is where things get a little bit complicated as every device is different. What we have to do is get a custom recovery. The way that I recommend to do that is go onto the twerp homepage or TWRP, which I'll have a link in the description to, and search for your device. Personally, I'm using the Nexus 5 for the purposes of demonstration as I think it's representative of a lot of devices. So I searched for the Nexus 5, selected it, and downloaded the newest build of TWRP. Now, I should say that not every device will necessarily be officially supported by TWRP, and if your device isn't, you might be out of luck, but it might also be worth checking out a site called the XDA forums to see if there's an unofficial build for your device, because quite often there will be. But as with anything unofficial, you have to be careful. Now next, things get even more complicated. You're gonna need a custom ROM for your device. And the problem with that is there are hundreds of devices as well as hundreds of custom ROMs. And not all custom ROMs necessarily support all devices. As well as that, there are official and unofficial builds of custom ROMs and there's just a lot of variation. But with that said, the one custom ROM that I do recommend to most people who are new to de-Googled Android is Lineage OS for Micro G. It has everything we need built in has pretty great compatibility and generally works really well. Another cool thing about Lineage OS for Micro G is that it comes with two fantastic pieces of software out of the box, Micro G and F-Droid. Now Micro G is a sort of re-implementation of the Google services. It's completely open source and privacy respecting, but what it will sort of do is enable you to use programs that require the Google services without actually having the Google services. Now it does send some information to Google Google, but not personally identifiable information. So maybe for people who want to go 100% de-Googled, you're not going to want this, but I think most average users are probably going to want it. And another thing that comes by default, which is fantastic, is F-Droid. Now F-Droid is a free and open source app store, essentially, and it's filled with free and open source applications, and it's probably where you want to get most of your apps from. But more than that, Lineage OS for Micro G actually comes with what's called the F-Droid Privileged extension by default which will basically just make F-Droid work a lot better and give you stuff like automatic updates and other things that you might be used to. It also supports most devices that are supported by Lineage OS because it itself is pretty much just a fork of Lineage OS with some extra stuff added that we need. However, some other ROMs you can try if you don't feel like using Lineage OS for Micro G or if your device isn't supported by Lineage OS for Micro G are Graphene OS, Lineage OS, E and many others. However, for this guide, we're just going to use Lineage OS for Micro G. So go ahead and go over to their website and hit the download button on the main page and find your device in the list that comes up. Now, this might be a bit confusing if you don't know your device's code name. If you're unsure of it, it should be displayed on the Twerp download page for your device. If not, you can find it through a quick web search. 
Once you've found your device, click it and inside of that folder, select the newest file that ends in a .zip. The other files are just used to verify the zip file. Once you've done that, you have your custom ROM ready to install. And now with that done, we have all of the files we need to de-Google our Android phone. But at this point, I do have to warn you that we are at the point of no return. If you follow this guide further, you are going to lose all of your data and you run the risk of bricking your phone. So be absolutely sure that that's something you want to risk and be absolutely sure you want to do this. Also make sure that you have all of your important data backed up. And with that said, let's get on to installing everything. So now we have all the files downloaded, we just need to go on device for a second. Now this is something that once again might be a little bit different across devices, but there shouldn't be too much variation. So what you want to do is go into your settings, go down to about phone, scroll down to build number and tap that seven times and it should tell you that you are a developer, but for me I've already enabled that. So next go back and you should see developer options, go into that and you should see something that says USB debugging or something to that effect and what you want to do is you want to enable that and then once we've done that go ahead and hop back over to your computer and then we can continue with this guide now we're back on our computer just make sure you've connected your phone through USB and we're going to go ahead and unlock the bootloader now two things to say about that one this really is the point of no return once you do this you're going to void your warranty if you still have warranty on your phone but also we're sort of entering the area where you might brick your phone. Unlocking the bootloader itself isn't going to brick it, but some of the things you can do when you're unlocked might. So just keep that in mind. Also a lot of devices once you've unlocked the bootloader may require you to wipe them. So make sure you have your data backed up at this point. Another thing is this. The process of doing this is, as with many other things in this guide, wildly different depending on what device you have. What I'm going to demonstrate is how you would unlock my Nexus 5. And I think that's similar to other devices in the Nexus lineup, Pixel devices, and I think Motorola devices are very similar too. But a lot of devices are also incredibly difficult to unlock. Devices like the Huawei series of phones are near impossible to unlock, in my experience anyway. So if in doubt, just Google your device and how to unlock it and something should come up. And I've done just that with my Nexus 5 and I have a handy little guide here that tells me how to do everything and it's very convenient. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and connect your phone, as I said, and make sure that everything is working with USB debugging like we enabled before. And the first command that you want to run is this. sudo adb reboot bootloader. Now, if you're on Windows, to run this command, you're probably going to have to open up your command prompt and cd into the directory where you downloaded your um, sort of platform tools. But on Linux, if you've installed this from the software repository, you can run it like any other command. So go ahead and run that. And of course, we need to enter in our sudo password and the phone will go ahead and reboot into bootloader mode. So now we can make all the modifications we need. Next, make sure it sees our device. And the command to do that is sudo fastboot devices. There it is. And next, now make absolutely sure you want to do this, and then run this command. sudo fastboot oem unlock, and what that will do is unlock the bootloader. We run that, and of course it tells us that I've already unlocked the bootloader, but if you haven't, what you will need to do is go onto your device, and do what it tells you to verify that this is what you want, and then it will go ahead and unlock your bootloader. Next, you want to reboot your phone. And as you can see, it's rebooted it, and what it will now do is go back into the Android operating system, and we can continue with this guide. Now, once you've unlocked your bootloader and rebooted back into Android, now what we need to do is install the custom recovery. And doing this actually isn't that hard, and there's not really that much variation between devices. Although some devices do it slightly differently, most devices do it the way that I'm going to show you. However, once again, if in doubt, look up the instructions for your specific device. So first we need to verify that we do indeed have the TWRP file and of course that we're in a position where we can use the Android tools. And now what we need to do is once again go back into the bootloader mode. And as I did earlier the command to do that is sudo adb reboot bootloader. And then it will go ahead and reboot back into the bootloader. And now we want to flash the recovery. 
and the command to do that is sudo fastboot flash recovery and then our recovery file so if we go ahead and hit enter on that it'll go ahead and install the recovery so now you have several options you can either use the command line to boot into your recovery which for some reason doesn't seem to work for me or you can manually enter the, the recovery mode from the device which will of course vary from device to device since doing it from here doesn't seem to work for me I'm going to go ahead and do it on device and I nearly forgot to mention the way that you would enter the custom recovery on a Nexus 5 from the phone itself is go back into bootloader mode and then use the volume keys to navigate to recovery mode and then go ahead and press the power button and as you can see it will go ahead and reboot into our custom recovery which it does although what I'm gonna have to say is this is gonna vary wildly from device to device most phones in my experience have some combination of buttons that you have to press when turning the device on to enter recovery mode and I think in this instance you're just gonna have to look up you know your specific device and how to enter recovery mode on it which is a fairly simple process and once we've done that we can go ahead and move over to our device to verify that everything is working as it should. And now if all goes well, you should boot into your custom recovery on device and you should see a screen like this. If it asks you to allow system access or anything like that, just allow it and then we can continue on with the guide. Now, I must warn you that this really is the point where you're going to lose data. So what I would recommend is if you want to be extra careful, Go into the section that says backup and then swipe to backup and it will go ahead and make a backup and it will sort of store it on your device's storage and then you can copy that to your computer. And uh, once you've done that and you've copied your backup we can now continue with the guide or you don't have to make a backup if you've already backed everything up. But next what you want to do is go into wipe, advanced wipe and then select everything with the exception of possibly your micro SD card. And of course, if you have any USB devices attached and that, it will show those as well. But for me, what I have to wipe is Dalvik slash ART cache, system, data, internal storage, and cache. But as with everything in this guide, it might be a little bit different for you. So then you want to go ahead and wipe all of those. And then once we've done that, you need to go back over to your computer to continue with the guide. So now we really are incredibly close to being done here. What we have to do now is copy our custom ROM onto the device. Now there's really two ways to do this. And the way that I'm going to do it is probably the easiest. As you can see, I've got my device connected to my computer in recovery mode and it detects it just like it would normally detect it when it's fully booted and whatnot. So all we're going to do, copy the file, and then paste it into our internal storage and it's that simple however in my experience sometimes that doesn't work or sometimes with some devices that can be a bit iffy so if that's the case you can do it through the command line as well now the command to do this is adb push the name of our file and then slash sd card so let me just type that out real quick and if i run this file it will go ahead and copy the file to the phone and we're just going to do it and as you can see it's now copying it but of course I already have it on here so it doesn't really matter but that's an alternative way to do it and once you've done that we need to move back over to our device and now we're back on device this is the last step make sure you're in recovery and everything and you want to go to install and then you should just simply see the file we copied to our phone so go ahead and select that and then swipe to confirm flash and it will go ahead and flash it and once that's done congratulations you've finished this guide and you now have a degoogled Android device but stick around because there's still a few things that I should probably explain but first optionally go back to the main menu then go into advanced file manager and then you should see this sort of list of files and folders and stuff find the one that says SD card and then find the file that you copied onto your device and just press delete swipe to confirm and then now the file that we copied won't be taking up so much storage space now go back to the main menu reboot go to system tap do not install and then if all goes well your phone should reboot and you should see the bootloader or the boot logo rather of the custom ROM that you installed now the first boot might take a while so just be patient 
but in the future this will actually boot up faster than a device with Google stuff on it. And now here we are on our fully booted de-Googled Android device. Just run through the setup like you would any other device and I will see you once I've gone ahead and done that. And once you've gone ahead and set up your device, well here we are in the completely de-Googled Android home screen. Now before you do anything, there is one thing you want to quickly do. Go into your app menu and go down to Micro G settings, go to self check and make sure all of these boxes are ticked. The reason is this is very important if you want to run apps that require Google services and whatnot. So for example we can see that the battery optimizations are set to ignore so just press yes and you can see we now have a lot more ticks. Another thing you want to do is go back and go down to unified NLP settings, configure location backends, enable that one and of course we want to enable it to access our location. Then if we go back up to the self check we can see that it is seeing that we have the unified NLP registered to the system. And it also says we don't have network based location enabled, but that's because I intentionally turned that off. Uh, the reason why we need unified NLP setup is A for Google apps, but also a lot of open source apps work better using the micro G location stuffs. So that's quite important to have on. And with that said, if you now know what you're doing, you can go ahead and use your de-Googled Android device. However, with all of that said, if you're new to de-Google Android, you might be a little bit confused about how to do things. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly explain a few things. First of which is there is no Google Play as this is de-Googled, but don't worry because there is still an app store. And that app store is F-Droid. Now what F-Droid is, is it's a app store, sort of a Google Play alternative, but it's filled with free and open source apps. Pretty much everything in here is free and open source, and a vast majority of it is completely freedom respecting. And the things that aren't freedom respecting are clearly marked. So for instance, let's say that we wanted VLC. We could go ahead and search for it, and then we can go ahead and install it. And it will pull it down. And since we have um, installed Lineage OS for MicroG, which comes with the Afteroid Privilege extension, it should just automatically install it with no issue which as you can see, it's going ahead and installing it. And there we go, we have a VLC. However, maybe for whatever reason you need proprietary software or you need a program that is not available on F-Droid. And that's where a program called Aurora Store comes in. Now, what this is, is it is essentially a client for the Google Play Store, but without Google. So what it will let you do is it will let you connect to the Google Play Store and download apps. Now, I will give you fair warning about using this. If you use it, you sort of potentially open yourself up to your freedom being disrespected, you know, possibly being sort of, well, not exactly spied on, but like having your data collected and all of that sort of thing. But I understand that for a vast majority of people, you're probably going to need proprietary software, which is where this comes in. Essentially, you can connect to this using an anonymous Google account, so you don't have to put your normal Google account in, but you can if you want. And you can browse this just as you would the Google Play Store. You can pick your app and you can download it and install it. So let's say, for instance, we wanted the Costa Coffee app, just as an example, where you can go ahead and hit install. It also gives us all sorts of helpful information, like we can see the reviews and ratings and stuff, but we can also see how much this app respects our freedom, and in this case, not very well. And then it will go ahead and bring up that. And what we can now do is go ahead and install it. And if we press install, and now we can go back, and we should see eventually, once the app's installed, and it's taking a second, but eventually the app should install itself and we can then go ahead and use it. And there we are. We've launched it and we now see that we have the Costa Coffee app. And this is proprietary software, but it's working absolutely perfectly. And for me, I use stuff like the Office 365 apps, which I do need, unfortunately, Steam and that kind of thing. But there are also several open source apps that are only available in the Google Play Store that you might be interested in. So what I would say is this. Only use the Aurora Store if you absolutely need something that you can't get on F-Droid. 
look for alternatives on Afteroid, try to maybe do without a program if you like really want to keep hold of your freedoms, but if you absolutely have to have something, the Aurora Store is a great piece of software. But with that said, that is my full guide on how to install and get a little bit started with degoogled Android. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it informative and I wish you luck on your adventures with degoogled Android. But with that said, thank you for watching this actually rather long video and I will see you in the next one.